question. So my name is Shang Xindu. I'm technical marketing engineer from data center switching. Same team with Lucas and Max. And also we have a colleague, I know, back there. And uh, feel free to answer any question. So <clears throat> we're going to go through, this is just a quickly go through uh, what customer are doing right now with configuration management, automation, network automation. And then we're going to go through, OK, how do they want to monitor their fabric and uh, um, which is the network observability. Then event-driven automation essentially is how to stitching these two parts together. Right? You automate your configuration and you're monitoring. And most of that action is actually manual. And of course, this is automated, but it's actually a lot of manual effort. So we want to use the event-driven automation essentially is trying to use whatever happened in your network and take the feedback to automatically change your network configuration or to remediate or mitigate the, the risk, right? That's even driven automation. Of course, we're going to go through some demo and uh, to the real case, use a case demo and to show you how to do that. So first thing, what customer are doing today? And this is a really simple way to do, right? And you have a bunch of devices. We're talking about network devices. You have a bunch of network devices here and you can use whatever the automation way Ansible, Terraform, Python, or even just use SSH. No one is judging. And you can automate a configuration and network configuration just individually by talking to a device individually. That's one way. Or you are sick of like rendering configuration for all the devices or like maintain a configuration for each device, do a bunch of a query. There's just something that you can help you, which is using controller. And we have in Cisco, we have our controller for either Nexus OS and also we have ACI, which is a mandatory, of course. We have ACI controller and also orchestrator for the ACI multi-site and also the network controller, which is used for the multi-cloud uh, deployment, right? You can use the controller by inserting the controller in the middle. You don't have to talk individual device. Then controller will become your central point of a contact and also controller will provide a more reachable information which you, have, you don't have to calculate by yourself. And what else? You can do more, right? Customer can do more. So I'm running my code like a locally on the Linux machine or, into, or a Terraform and to apply the configuration. But actually, I want to streamline all my change. I want to make sure once I change the configuration in my centralized DB or somewhere else, I don't know, it will trigger the pipeline, right? Trigger the pipeline, use the source control to automatically deploy all the configuration all the way to my concrete device. That's the CICD pipeline, or sometimes we usually refer to as the infrastructure as code. This is how customer automate. It's a step by step and the deeper and deeper how to automate their configuration. And in Cisco, we, well, data center switching, we have developed all the Ansible modules to help customer to achieve that. And also we have developed the Terraform provider for Nexus OS and the, all the controller to help customer to achieve that. Doesn't matter which, how, what's the way that how you manage your configuration for their help. Okay, so next is this network observability, how to monitor the network. Well, we have a customer, we have a network running and up and uh, it's pr probably running perfectly, but as a network operator, you always have something in your mind and you are thinking, okay, my BGM neighbor is up and uh, okay. Where, how's my uplink utilization? Is it the time to refresh my gear or moving the workload? Or if there is something goes wrong, I want to say, okay, where's my endpoint, right? I want to find where is the IP address? How do I narrow down the problem? So in order to, to do that, basically we have a provider way on the Nexus OS and to streaming all this operational data, right? Configuration data is fairly easy. It's just configuration. Usually you already have that in the ASPO or as Ansible playable or anything. But operational data is a runtime data. You can only get it from switch. There's no other way that you can get it from anywhere else, right? The operational data. So for Nexus OS, we support the two, uh, like different kind of streaming telemetry. For that out, we can use the gRPC, HTTP, UDP, just the streaming the raw data out of the Nexus OS. And we also support the DAO in basically using the GMI to, to Dial into a switch and tell the switch, hey, what kind of data I need, and please stream that back, right? That's just a streaming telemetry on Nexus OS. On ACI, it's a little bit different. ACI, the controller is mandatory. We don't have a way to stream the information directly from the switch right now. But everything is available on the 
right? APIX centralized controller, it was, since day one, the build to manage the configuration and also take the operational data back. So we can stream the information from the APIC and uh, by using the API. This is a build with API since day one. So we can use the REST API, you can query, you can like passively just a cable query, which is a way, but I would not suggest you to do that. And we also support a WebSocket. So we can subscribe to the WebSocket for anything, anything, any object, the configuration, the operation data. You can subscribe that and you can get real time notification if there's anything change. Okay. Um, so this is how you do from ACI. And then once you have the data, oh, sorry, this is how you do ACI. Or we can insert the next dashboard inside. And we have our built in in house solution, which is taking the telemetry tree data from whatever the fabric you have, ACI or Nexus OS. And then you can even use the Kafka bus to stream your own client, your third party client to consume that. Right? This is the in house build solution. And how do I build a fabric on top of that? Oh, sorry, how do I build a tool on top of that? You get a data, you have a collector, and usually customer is going to write the data into a database and use some kind of open source dashboard to visualize, right? But to use a dashboard, user will have to manually check the dashboard and figure out, just digging into the data, figure out, okay, what's going on with my fabric? Or you can use the Nexus dashboard insight to put everything together, right? Um, basically, it's a combined in-house solution and which combine all the collector database and dashboard together and even do a further analysis and to, to raise the information, raise the anomaly to the user if it detects something abnormal in your network, right? This is in-house solution. But doesn't matter how do you do that. You can use Nest dashboard, you can use whatever does the, the like uh, the open source dashboard. Eventually the, the operator will have to do by themselves to figure out what's going on in my network. So put them together, we have Maybe you are using some kind of pipeline, some infrastructure as code to automate your network when you are using a next step for insight and or you are building your open source solution to monitor. But eventually there are no cross between these two, right? And I manage the configuration, but I'm building a separate uh, solution to, to monitor my fabric. The event-driven automation eventually is just trying to stitch this together. Basically trying to use whatever data you collected from the collector and take that feedback to your pipeline or to your automation pipeline and to help you to auto remit the problem or do something automatically. So there are some use case and uh, the event can come from anywhere. It doesn't really have to come, in from, come from your network and it can from coming from your uh, the, the, the source control system and you can use that to integrate with the automatically deployed infrastructure as code or you can use that for a repetitive job, right? For, for example, when you're trying to onboard something, uh, sorry, not onboarding, and when you try to provision some server, right? This is repetitive and a low risk job. And when you connect a server, you just need to configure VLAN. But eventually before you have to use, before you have to like open ticket, and uh, then the network team is coming, take the ticket and go the CI configuration and provision VLAN and then close the ticket. This is a repetitive job and uh, it's this is a low risk of job. And you can automate that with the event driven automation and by automatically detecting the event change or like a new endpoint learned. And auto remedial and we have some incident happening in the network. And when this has happened, it's fairly easy. Some incidents is kind of hard to troubleshoot. It could be something complex, it's hard to resolve, but something is really easy. Or at least when I see some certain thing happening in my network, I can try to do something to remediate the problem or mitigate the impact of the problem, right? That is something at least we can do until we actually solve the problem, solve the issue. Or like I said, some issue is really hard to solve that automatically. Then we can, yeah, it will raise the ticket. You can automatically raise the ticket but you can use that information to automatically collect the needed information from the switch or from your network or whatever the target that ticket is open on and to enrich the ticket, to collect as more as, as much information as, as you need and to reduce the time to solve the problem, right? This is the ticket enrichment. So how do we do that? Um, basically, the event-driven automation is really, is I want to stitching any source and any target. The event can come in from anywhere. We don't have to 
limited that to the operational data of your switch or of your network, of your infrastructure, it can come from anywhere. For example, you change something on NetBox, which is used for CMDB, and you can, it will trigger event, and it will trigger a configuration change on your device. Or it's uh, you find some anomaly from next dashboard inside, it can trigger event, and then you can do something, right? And uh, basically, now what we see that for customer, we have would the two like different ways to do that. And with, if you're using the Terraform, you can use the Conform, uh, console Terraform sync. Right? Console eventually essentially is the the key value storage, and you can store the application event or not application event, the application state, and use that console to trigger Terraform sync and to sync the network configuration, which is needed for the application to be up and running. Or you can use Ansible, right? Ansible recently released something called the Ansible Rulebook, event-driven Ansible. And you can use the Ansible to receive the notification from any source. They have some built-in source plugin, for example, the Kafka WebSocket, and but you can put a lot of things like integrate the, um, the the telemetry with NextOS and push it even to the Ansible. The Ansible will do, automatically trigger the Ansible playbook and uh, to run the uh, configuration. So we can quickly go through some demo about the event-driven automation. The first thing before we go there, I want to just quickly go through the use case that we were talking about. Um, this is actually a real use case from the one of the customers. So basically, the customer has a bunch of bare metal server, and they need to onboard the bare metal server to a switch. And but however, the 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 they could be connected anywhere, right? And they want to automate or streamline this chain. It could be connected to anywhere, but they do keep changing tracking which MAC address is mapped to which EPG. This is for ACI. ACI use case mapped to each, which EPG. So the idea is basically whenever and we subscribe to the endpoint update, we are listening for the endpoint update for a particular EPG. You can call it a staging EPG or something. And then whenever there's a end host or a server connected and it will power on, it will send some data to a switch, then it will trigger endpoint create, right? We will learn that information and then it will be, it will update to your client and then the client can run something and reading the mapping and then basically moving the interface where the endpoints are learned to the correct EPG. So it's automatically, as long as you keep tracking the host mapping, then everything is going to be happening automatically. So that's just the idea about how to do that. And then let me show the demo really quick. So basically, this is a Ansible rulebook, right? For the Ansible rulebook, you define what's the source and what's the what's the source and what's the rule. Then for each rule and what's the thing you are going to trigger, what's the playbook you are going to trigger. The first one that we're going to show you is for the Ansible EDA, it's, sorry, it's ACI uh, Event Driven Automation. Essentially, it's used in the ACI subscription. This is actually a customized um, plugin, WebSocket plugin. Let me show you here. By the way, this one you can see, right, the font. Okay, uh, so I'm going to, so basically it's a really simple customized uh, plugin for using the WebSocket. So it's a subscribe whatever the API. So we are using the API or the D and distinguished name. And as long as you provide it to a WebSocket, then we're going to create a WebSocket and subscribe to this particular object. And it will receive the updates automatically from the HTTP whenever it is a change. Delete, add, modification, doesn't matter. So we're actually looking for the, the creation, right? And uh, so, yeah, it's really simple. It's just uh, listening to the rule, and once there is any object created, or the more specific the endpoint object is created, then it's going to run this playbook called a segment, right? It's going to run the playbook to call a segment and to try to move the endpoint or move the stack binding from the staging environment and to the, the, um, the correct EPG. So I'm going to run this really quick and uh, to skip this part. So I'm actually don't have a bare metal. I'm using a VM to, to, to simulate this problem. So here you can see I have this staging network and which is used to staging the, uh, the, the endpoint onboarding. And I'm listening all the endpoint information from this staging network. And you can see as soon as they learned endpoint, 
and there is an ansible playbook trigger. So what it does, essentially, it is moving the stack binding to the Kubernetes cluster one, and then create that binding, then we will be able to see the endpoint momentarily and from the EPG. So that's just a quick thing, right? And think about that, this is a low risk. I'm just moving one interface from one VLAN to another VLAN. This is a low risk job, and it's a repetitive job. It can free your operator from, all, from the, this kind of low risk job and to, to more important thing, right? So uh, this is the endpoint. This is an auto segmentation using the, the, using the ACI. And the next demo we're going to go through is using the Nexus OS. So Nexus OS use case is actually even simpler. And we usually have this as cross network and the leaf is going to connect it to all your spine and the, uh, all the spine. But sometimes leaf could, something could go wrong from the leaf. But we have a redundancy. Usually the leaf is not just a single, not in a single home that's going to create a VPC. But if this leaf goes wrong, I would like to remove the leaf from the forwarding path. Just make sure it is not in my way until I can figure out what's actually happening on the switch. So the idea is really simple. For example, I'm streaming my interface operational status and to the EDA, to the, uh, to the ASPO, and I'm subscribing my interface operational status, right? And I want to monitor my uplink. More specifically, I want to monitor my uplink to the spun. If one interface is goes down or one uplink is goes down, I'm going to do some calculation to say, okay, how many do I have? And I still have one. Okay, perfect. I can still keep the switch running, but of course it's going to read some kind of ticket and to the the network operator to say, hey, there's something wrong with the switch. You need to take a look. But what if I have a second uplink goes down, right? And if the Ethernet one set fifty also goes down. This is something happening on the switch. And actually, I do want to isolate the switch from the network to do the further troubleshooting. Right? We can use Nexus OS. We can use the graceful insertion and removal. Just put it into the maintenance mode, remove from the forwarding plan, and do some troubleshooting. And when this is up, then we can put it back down, put it back on. Right? This is the whole idea about this streaming, um, uh, the, the, the network auto remediation. So we can take a look. So it's the same rule book, and really this one is a little bit different. It's just not using the, it's not use, uh, do the streaming directly, but instead it's actually listening to a Kafka bus. And uh, so there's a separate container, which is subscribed to the, the um, using the GMI dial in to dial into a switch. Then once it's received the update, it will put that information to the Kafka bus. So the Ansible can receive the notification, right? So let me quickly run this playbook. Right? And now we are running this playbook. And sorry, not root playbook, the rule book. So we are going to log into a switch and I'm going to shut down the one of the interface. So if you show interface status. So I have two interfaces connected to my spine, Ethernet 1 slash 35, Ethernet 1 slash 36. And I'm going to shut down one of them and to see what's going to happen. So because I'm subscribed to the event, the operational states, and it's going to send a notification immediately to the, I'm using the telegraph for the streaming telemetry. It will send that to the telegraph and telegraph will put that information to my Kafka bus. And you can see that because I calculated the uplink connected, I still have one, I'm not going to do anything. So the task pull switch into the maintenance mode is skipped. But what if I start to shut down the second one? Right? After I shut down the second one and I'm going to receive the notification in a moment, I hope. <laughs> Yeah, it's received the notification. Well, it do the same thing. It goes through the same pipeline and uh, gather the current information of my uplink. And then it will figure out, oh, I don't have any uplink connected. Then it will put the switch into maintenance mode. This is going to take a while to finish. I'm not going to continue this demo, but you get the idea, right? 
and we can run the same pipeline or design a different pipeline to put the switch back to normal mode once the uplink is up, it's all recovered, right? It's all can be all kind of can be um, automatically. So um, that's is basically everything about today's session. But what I want to mention is this is really just some simple example, and the sky is actually unlimited, and you can combine any source with any destination, and as long as you have a proper rule to automatically execute this answer or using the Terraform to execute the configuration change and based on type of the event. Okay. I have one question to that. Go ahead. Um, the colleagues from the security BU, yep. they implemented an XDR kind of a low code uh, version, yeah? You have some inputs, you have some logs coming in, mm -hmm. and if A, B, C is happening, I would like to trigger, for example, Ansible, a playbook, yeah, yeah. certain one. Have you ever thought about in the, let's say, Nexus world to implement a similar low code capability that to make the burden a bit more easy to, to get this running? I do think that's uh, probably a good idea, but the problem is Cosmo, the thing is about the Cosmo, Cosmo has a different way to, to automate their network. They, like I mentioned, Ansible, Terraform, Python script, or even anything. They, in order to do that, then we have to figure out a way to, to run that in the thing locally. The best thing we can do is to do that on the NDI, the next dashboard inside, but we'll have to support all kinds of runtime for the uh, automation. I still think the best way is what we are doing is we are Detecting the anomaly on the NDI, but we tell we use Kafka to stream that information out. You can build your own thing to detect the event and run and the the the, uh, the automation in your existing automation infrastructure. We don't think it's worse or there's a really use case for customer to have to use NDI to automate your network configuration directly. That's my opinion. Yeah, now I think for example on DNA Center, yeah. Of your tons of information already onboarded yeah. on that you can trigger a certain automation, yeah? yeah? That would be kind of a logical way for me to implement this. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. That's, that's why I think for any kind of controller or data operation tool, you need to have a way to stream in whatever the information you detected. When I said information, it's not like, okay, I can detect the infer, uh, interface up and down easily without doing any controller, but the beauty of the, the all this data operation solution is it will do a further analysis. Like NDI, it will analyze the, the, the anomaly and based on the trend and based on the history local data. That's the beauty of the, all this data operation tool. That kind of information, you can do that with open source, but it's gonna be a little bit hard for the user, right? That's why we provide this in-house solution to customer. 